Hey there, neighbors and naysayers. Clint Finney again. This is the recording of Kevin Swope's presentation on grazing management technology tools, mostly about a grazing app from the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council winter meeting held February 24th, 2022 in Caddis, Ohio. So enjoy. A couple of reasons why I think this is important to cover. Number one, how many of you have one of these? Uh, Huh? I hate it. I use only as a phone. Yeah, well, I use, I use mine only as a phone. T traditionally, I mean, I'm uh, not glued to the thing. I bought it primarily. I, I bought the thing to actually take credit cards at the farmer's market. It was the sole purpose for upgrading to this phone. But then I got, I got to thinking about another thing. How many of you are really good at keeping records? <laughs> huh? Good, good at keeping paper records? Keep track of all your grazing moves and everything. Uh, 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 <laughs> so at any rate, I, I, I actually, you know, I relented to the fact that I have this stupid thing. I'm not glued to it all the time. I can shut it off and people don't know where I'm at. But I thought I, I paid for this thing. I need to figure out how to make it work for me on the farm. Uh, typically, I don't take it with me to the field, but. At any rate, uh, I guess the National Bison Association sent out a thing, and I was I was losing, I'm going to be honest, you're going you're gonna to find out how terrible of a herd this land. I was losing track of when calves were born, I'm losing track of everything about our herd, our flock, everything else, and they sent out, since we were a member, that I had, a, had this uh, app to keep track of our bison herd. And so I thought, well, I wonder if there's an app for doing something that can do a better job of tracking our grazing and our moves and some of the things that we're doing on the farm. And I, and I started working with it. I'm not a master at it. Uh, I'm cheap. I only use the free version of it. But I thought there was enough. I, I used it well enough and I found enough useful information on this that I thought it was worth at least presenting. You do with it whatever you want to do with it. But I'm going to show you. I just wanted to go through the app. I wanted to show you what it looks like in the field. I wanted to show you what it looks like on the computer screen because you have to do both. And if you just bear with me, I will give this a shot. What I'd hope to show you is what goes into the actual entry because part of what this does is it's keeping track of your, uh, you're, you're entering in your, your livestock numbers, your herds, uh, you're doing maps of your property, you've got exact acreages of the land base that you're working with. A lot, of, a lot of times we're trying to get through people uh, through their mind exactly how we do these forage calculations and, and what, we're, uh, you know, what we're using to determine the amount of dry matter needs that uh, you have based upon the, uh, the uh, livestock that you're, you're working with. The other thing that this does is it forces you to think about the rainfall data. How many of you track daily the amount of rainfall that you're getting through your grazing season. You track it? Okay. Yeah, you, you've got a weather station. Okay, I mean, we have, a lot of us will have a rain gauge, but you don't... I, my, my mind does not keep uh, a day-to-day -day, uh, cumulative record of what's going on. We know, oh, by God, it's getting dry. Uh, what I wanted to show you on that computer is this thing is keeping a 365 day rainfall uh, accumulated data and you can graph it so you can see like I, I did it the other day and I'm like wow I knew we really had a lot of rain in July last year okay and now, it's not recording it off of a weather station it's not recording it off of a weather you station but I, and I'll show you this on my screen I hope this works I mean it's always a danger when you're here is that up now? It's gonna, I think it's going to be slow just because of the internet service here. But since I'm here, I'll go ahead and, <clears throat> and work through some of this. If I click this, uh, this gives me the, the site will come up so that I can add rainfall data. So basically what I do is as I walk to work, the rain gauge is right there by the driveway. And I can go in, and it's real simple. And if I miss a date or two, and actually what I did just recently was I just went to the Akron, uh, or not the Akron, the Youngstown Warren Regional Airport's 
website because I take the rain gauge down in the wintertime so you don't freeze it. So I went in and I accumulated at the end of each month their total rainfall. Is it totally accurate for my location? Not as accurate as it, as it is when I walk by it. But all I'll do here is just walk in and plug in off the rain gauge that reading and hit done. And you just, you just, that becomes a part of your regular day. It's just tracking your rainfall day. That, that I find extremely handy. Uh, stock numbers. Okay, now I am able to break this down. All of this begins on the laptop. You have to do your map work and you have to do your livestock data entry and all of that in the actual website uh, on a laptop computer or a tablet. I mean, that's what you do on a tablet. You can't do it on your cell phone. But I have there, I can look at that right now when that comes up. I hold it still. I, I've got two basic herds that they, they refer to. And this, this program was developed in Australia. So they've got certain terminologies you've got to get used to. Uh, the bison herd and the sheep herd are the main ones that are at the uh, farm during the grazing season. So I can click on uh, the cows or the bison herd and I can scroll through and I, I know exactly the number of animals that I have. I know what the weights are. You can run through the scale or just estimate the weights. But it's telling me that I've got 22 head and I need 352 pounds of dry matter per day. That I find really handy because then I can begin to work with those grazing numbers. If, we, if, if you've heard us talk at all, we generally talk about 300 to 350 pounds of direct available dry matter per acre per inch of forage in a pound. So I can take this, I know right off how many pounds of dry matter I need for the day. And then I can begin to size our paddocks and, our, and, and schedule our moves accordingly. I also know by looking at that where that group is at, they're on a sawmill pad. And during the grazing season, I can look at that and I know that they're, they're in field three or they're in field four or whatever. Uh, I can look at this and I, and I have all the moves recorded. When I move them, it records the time of day I move them, and where, where I move from which paddock to which paddock. And that's all just accumulated in this site. Because you know, a lot of us are working away, and you, you know, it's easy to lose track of when you were there last. Uh, so if they move them, they can put it in there too. 
Yeah, and I can click right on this when I'm on my map. You see that area right there, I click on it, I know the name of it, and I know it's been 116 days since I've been in that paddock last. That I have found to be extremely useful. And what I did this year, you know, we kind of get in our mind about this 30-day rotation. I increased our rest periods to 65, 60, 65, 70 days this year and totally restructured the way we were grazing. But it's really, it's really easy to lose track of how long it's been since you were in that paddock. And I've got it at the click of a finger. Okay, I know those it's, are those paddocks, you drew those in. Now, none of ours are set paddocks. Ours are different every time. You can split this. Now, it, it has the capability of doing that. I have not experienced, experimented with that yet, but it can be done. Uh, the okay. other thing that I have not done, when I move, you can move. All I have to do is on the phone, I'll click. This, I think I can just drag it and drag it to whatever paddock I want it to go to. On, when I'm in the field on the phone, I click on the map, that comes up and that, either that green or that orange icon is there, and I just click on it, and it, then I hit move, and then I touch the paddock I want to go to, and hit done. One, two steps that I'm missing in there that I, I intend to take it a little further is, you can do what they call an observation. And that is an observation of the amount of dry matter, the residual. We talked about this last time when Bob Henderson was here. How much residual are you leaving? Uh, Jim Garish will talk about that in a lot of his, he's got a video called Don't Be Afraid to Waste Grass. I think Bob Henderson, what did he say? Was he saying a, a residual of 1,600 to 2,000 pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood? Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. To give you an idea, 1,200 pounds is roughly three inches of residual. You're leaving more residual, again, to capture that sunlight. Uh, so I, I'm structuring our moves, but back to the, the observations, you, would, you would, would record that observation out, which you could do with a, a rising plate meter, you could do it with one of our grazing sticks. You can do it with your eye, you know, in time. Can you take the maps that you already have from MRCS or... No, I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think so, but there may be the ability to import a shape file here. That's the thing, you'd have to have a shape file to import. You'd have to have a shape file. I'm not sure that our current conservation desktop produces so. shape files like ArcGIS did. And 90% of those online based farm softwares usually have access to the old flat maps, but the boundaries aren't very well. Yeah. So usually you'd have to put them all in and it's like when I do a field, I'll get all the little strips um, because that's how they record them in the flat maps. And I have to be moving all of them and they're off by 50 to 100 feet almost always. But you're better off just drawing pretty easy. Yeah. These maps I just clicked off because there's a little icon you can shut those layers off. I mean, you've got your Google satellite and whatnot. That's what it's using. They're, they're extremely accurate. I mean, and they're, they're clear. This doesn't, this doesn't do it justice, what I see on the screen when you've got good service. You can only zoom in so far, but you basically, it wasn't hard to draw this stuff in. It did, you know, you can do it real quick. Uh, anyway, the, the second observation that you could make, or the, the first one, is observing the amount of uh, forage you're going into. Now, if you get into tall grass grazing, I don't know, and that, what was Bob? Bob, I think, was just measuring overall height. You're really not getting true dry matter, you know, an accurate dry matter per acre reading with a rising plate meter if you're in grass that's two feet tall. I don't know how you accurately do that, but I know that tall grass grazing works. So you could just make a general observation probably that you went into two foot of grass and you came out with 1,600 pounds of dry matter. I haven't done that yet, but when you do your moves, you have the opportunity there to do that. But this has been very helpful for me, keeping track of these moves. I, it, it isn't just important to keep track of how frequently you move. You know, we get hung up on, we need to move every three days, we need to move every day. Well, that's only giving us so much information. This is, this is recording and keeping a lot more detailed information at your fingertips. Does it forecast the growth? It probably will if you aren't cheap. Yes. It, if you notice, 
if you notice, like up here, you're planning, that's locked. And this other is locked. What I'm using is the light version of this Maya grazing. It's free. If you begin to unlock that and they're constantly pushing you to do that, the whole idea is you'll get hooked on this and then you'll want to pay the $100 a month to use it. You know, I don't know. I'm going to use it until I determine that it's really worth it. But i just run through real quick. You've got your class set up. Uh, this, this I pulled right over here. This is how you initially get started with this little settings uh, portion over here. Let's see if that works. When you, yeah, as soon as you move them, it starts recording that. So when I go back and click at that, well, click on that map, it tells me how many days it's been since I was there. You still have to make decisions, and you kind of you have to use that available dry matter needs for your group, your herd, to still make your daily decisions. This isn't going to make your decisions for you, no, 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 but you can't keep track of these automatically. Yes, you know, yes. How many are in there? Well, it knows. It knows the date. You, you, it knows the date that you that you move that little icon to the next paddock. It knows the date, and sometimes you'll have to correct the time. And it's not time accurate to the minute. It's time accurate to the nearest even hour, basically. But you can go back and look at that because if you, anybody's messed around with grazing long enough, you know that twelve hours too long in a paddock can cost you a lot of grazing time. So you can actually look at this and you begin to, to gain some information. This is where you set up your different classes of livestock. You can choose all different uh, stock classes. Uh, you do the same thing with your herd setup. Then you start. You begin to start grouping in uh, the, the the number of animals. You know the number of cows, the number of the bull, the calves that you have in that group. So you define the stock of livestock that you're working with and you group them into the, your grazing group. Uh, I won't go through everything here directly, but uh, you begin working in with your map setup and your property setup and all of that. Something interesting over here I haven't really done a lot with, but if you're doing a lot of fertilizing or spraying or, or weed treatment, you can actually put a cost. You can put your uh, equipment list in there. You can put a cost of your materials if you're going to spray the rhea. You know, if you're going to do things like that, you can track your, uh, your, your your cost. I don't do a lot of input, so I don't add your read in there. But if you really want to give yourself an honest look at what that's costing you, you can assign a cost to your tractor, a cost to you as a person. You can put your current price of your read in there. I can control, you know, if I want Caleb to have access to this, I can give him access to it. Uh, Show that rainfall matrix. I thought that was getting where we were at. Again, I searched through a lot of different. I'm not getting uh, that right there is what I wanted to show you. You know, I, I had looked in, and there may be other apps out there that are available to help grazers, but this is the one that I found. They, 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 they sell this thing as developed by grazers for grazers, and I have found it to be very easy to use. But that graph right there, I think, is very helpful when you click on it. That. That's where I went back to July. There was, there was a period here where I was just putting in general information. But then, it, you know, you can see when I actually started using the program, the numbers start to be more realistic to the site. But you wonder why we grew so much grass, at least where I was at. And in the summer months, we had double, almost double what we had in July. We were getting all kinds of rain. But I think this is incredibly important to keep daily records on this. And having a good, easy way to graph that and really start, you know, having a feel for what we need to be doing. Because if it's starting to get really dry, we better start thinking about how we're how we're grazing, how tall, whether we're going to start feeding hay. I mean, there are a lot of decisions that should be made based upon you know, what has happened with our rainfall events over the past month or two or three. Uh, you know, we, we 
start seeing those shortages or those excesses or whatever, if I see an excess like that in July, you know, I'm a little more comfortable going into September. Yeah, really, because if you'll notice, how many of you have noticed since you started grazing a change in the amount of runoff that you have off of your farm? Has anybody besides me noticed that? Pay attention to that. It's significant. It is significant. We have far less runoff coming off of our fields and our farms when we do a good job of managing our grazing and managing our soil health. It is significant. There's no reason why in a climate like we have where we get 36 inches plus of precipitation that we should ever suffer from serious drought. We have the ability to weather that much better if we use that information to our advantage. But anyway, you get the general idea of how this functions. Uh, I just wanted to present that. I don't get a kickback from the company for doing it. <laughs> I think it was, I, I just tagged it, it went up significantly. It had been like $45 a month. The U.S. price for our small herds was like $98 a month. So it's not cheap. It's not cheap, but if you're cheap like me, you can, I don't know, maybe someday they'll cut off the light version. Right now, what I'm using is not the pro version, it's just the light, and it gets enough information that, you know, if you Well, yeah, that gets into your treatment report and your product report. And I'm not, there's not going to be anything in there because I don't, <clears throat> other than clipping pastures, I have yeah, no records. I'm not out there applying any fertility, so I don't need to, nothing near that. But that's what it would have, and that would be, you know, with the cost of, we just covered that the last meeting, the cost of uh, fertilizer, that could be a significant piece of information to know. To know how much you used. And, and what it had cost you, you could start tweaking some numbers and making some other decisions. Uh, anyway. I think you bring up a good point, though, that there are a lot of apps out there that can figure these. Because we um, have been talking a lot about record keeping and, and crop, on the crop end of things and just how hard, I even have a hard time just with budgeting and stuff. But they have a lot of apps if you know exactly what you want or what you need to They'll calculate all that great gain and, you know, automatically calculate. You can do all that stuff in Excel if you're good at Excel, but Excel's a game. There are a lot more user-friendly apps that can help manage that stuff. Yeah, and I'm terrible with records, and anybody, you're out there working and it's raining and everything else, you're just not going to keep records. I'm, I'm terrible with them. Eric's yeah, feed management school this time is on that free apps that's how you use them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at any rate, I just wanted to Wanted to put that out there just as an encouragement that it's out there, it's available. Uh, it's not for everybody. You know, I'm not a technology guru, but there's certain things that I just felt we need to we need to do a better job, and we all can do a better job of keeping records with our livestock, with our grazing. That's the only way you're going to improve is to have information to work with to make your decisions. So, anyway, Kevin, is, is the version you have? going to predict how many pounds of dry matter you have available when you go into that paddock? Uh, it may, but I, I'm, I'm doubting it. But you could, I mean, you could figure it out. With, well, up until they, you get, I mean, you're not going to be able to figure out tall, with tall grass, they, you're not going to be able to. Why are they wanting all the rainfall data to start if they aren't predicting? The pro version, it starts to give you dry matter accumulation. Yeah, the, the, the the pro version, I think, starts doing more of those analytics. I don't think this version does all of that. Eventually, I don't think some, some millennial will probably find a way to predict it and then use your automatic gates to where you can do it while you're out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The hard part is, though, like, does it track what your species is? I mean, your species is forage? Species forage, and then there. Raising, there's usually multiple species, so how do you manage for all of them? We manage for diversity. Well, I'm saying on the algorithm side. Yeah, I, you're right. Really you're right. I don't. I don't know how that actually works. I mean, we're smart enough to figure out when we're looking at grazing heights and whatnot. I, I just picked apart the, the two things that have helped me the most. A, keeping well. Three, keeping track of where the livestock are at. 
keeping track of the number of days of rest because we're not giving our pastors enough rest and keeping track of rainfall data and keeping track of how many pounds that, that I actually need as that changes through the season. I mean, there's, there's four or five key pieces of information that are just really helpful and really basic, but we just lose track of them. We're all busy. I mean, I think this thing's way up underestimating the amount of forage that I produce because it's only really basically calculating how long the livestock were in there. It knew that they were in there that long, so it tells me that from what I gather, it knows how much they needed, and obviously they were there that long, so it must have you produced 1,500 pounds of dry for the year. So, yeah, but I, I like it. I wouldn't have. Yeah. It can, it can if I would give it. In that observation, it, you could do that if you take the time to go through that real quick with a rising plate. And I need to do, that's my goal for this year, at least temp for a few of these, is to figure out what my residual is. You know, we all have a habit of just, I, I don't want to know what the numbers if you can see it yourself. Like if you know your residual residual. Well, I think. Where will the numbers help you? I think that if you actually go through with a rising plate meter and do it accurately, which, you know, when I was doing forestry work, you had, if you really want to get into standard deviation and all of that kind of stuff, you know, then the, the more plots you take in there, the more accurate it's going to be. So if you actually take time with a rising plate I think, and not if they, those, those are expensive, but that's going to be probably the most accurate means of figuring out what your true is. I can kind of eyeball it, but is it accurate? I don't know. Well, we use it. We use the rise of the plate and it's interesting because we use the plate and it's two samples out of the field. And it might be several. You do two? Yeah, we usually take, it takes 50 steps to make one sample. And then it gives us a How many times is it sticking it down? 50 times. Okay. And then we do another 50 times. stick and you start sticking it in the ground you want to tend and you do it with the rising plate meter too let's go over to that real thick spot you know but I, I don't know I, I, I think any information that we can gather from this one. I, I was just when I when I got the bison out then I just started doing grazing games. I just ran across it and Jim Gerrish has been working with it a lot if you don't do anything else with it and you do YouTube, they have some really good uh, YouTube videos. My Grazing did some YouTube videos with Jim Garish that are really, really good. They're really, really good. They're worth going in and watching those videos on Grazing videos. And I pick up stuff every time I hear Jim speak. So. All right. Kevin, what's the name of this app? It's uh, it goes, my. Um, I am grazing, and there should be a flyer there that it has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's plenty of those. If you, if you didn't get one and you want one, you can it. but you can go right there to the website and start there. Yep, yep. So. You brought up a good question, point two. If you don't want to know how to do something, usually if you Google out something on YouTube, it'll give you a whole. Someone will be showing a demonstration of how to do it. How to yeah. do it better. No, no. Yeah. But like, you know how I did all these weird things with that? Like that was a YouTube video to figure out how it <laughs> didn't yeah. work because of the internet. So at any rate, I, I wanted this because I hate our NOCS record sheets. They're terrible. <laughs> Special thanks to Mr. Kevin Swope for doing that uh, presentation on the grazing app. And also special thanks to Mrs. Christy Dickey for uh, helping Kevin with the technology there to use his phone and be able to get it to the computer and to the screen so we can all understand the way that Kevin uses the My Grazing app on his operation. Uh, after that, please enjoy some of the other recordings we have here on our YouTube channel. We'll be recording the presentations from the March winter meeting uh, here in 2022 in Caddis. Uh, and then we'll be heading outside April through October to do pasture walks on the fourth Thursday of every month and we hope to see you there with that i'll say see you next time